All right. So today we're going to be talking about prospecting and qualifying leads. This is something that a lot of agents have some trouble with, but uh, it's something that we have to do. It's part of it. Let me figure my slide out here. Here we go. What is prospecting? So prospecting by definition, uh, according to the Oxford language, uh, is to look out for a search for, right? So as real estate agents, we're looking out for new deals. We're looking out for clients. Uh, they've even put in a sentence, the responsibilities of salespeople to prospect for customers. So they're basically saying we have to do this, right? This is this is something we have to do to ensure business uh, in a sales industry, period. And we are in a sales industry. So the way I break down the money making tasks, and I've and I've talked about this in the past, there's it's very simple. There's a lot of different bells and whistles in real estate to get caught up and, you know, oh, I need to do this info graphic. I need to do this video. I need to do that. Now, obviously, if you're effective with it and you're using it the right way, it's great. But there's a lot of uh, different happy hour events and things you can get caught up in. But these are the money making tasks, in my opinion, that will ensure you have business for a lifetime. Now, if you do these every single day, you're going to be successful. So you need to plan for this. The first one is prospecting. Right. So prospecting your cell phone is the key to all deals. It has to be ringing in order to have business. Simplest way to put it, learn to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you won't make money. That's a mindset thing, right? Getting pumped up uh, to do that. What are you going to say? What are you going to do? Um, you can use tech to boost uh, lead capture uh, through the CRM uh, prospect to reach out to potential clients. And I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different options you can do that works for you uh, the best way that you enjoy to make sure that you've got clients. But here's a couple examples of them. Uh, you know, offer tax appeals, you can do that. You can talk with expireds, FISBOs, for rent by owners, open houses, uh, being intentional on social media, being an expert in the neighborhood pages, uh, new home photo shoots, videos, inventory homes, and obviously sphere of influence, which as a real estate agent, we've heard, you know, SOI sphere of influence uh, over and over and over. So second thing is lead follow-up, right? So prospecting, we're trying to find people's information, trying to find people who are actually looking to buy or sell. That's a huge key, not just people who we have their information for, uh, and, and then following up with those people, right? So time block for it. This is a must. Uh, you have to do this. If you don't do this, and I've got here, this is where most agents, in my opinion, fail with time management and with setting out time blocking for lead follow-up. You've got their information. You had a great conversation. You don't follow up with them. They're going to go on to the next person. So having a solid follow-up system in place is super important. Um, now, obviously, with what we've got, everybody's into tech. Tech's the next you know, best thing since sliced bread. Uh, use tech to help you out, right? You've got a CRM. These CRMs these days are absolutely amazing. Our CRM chime is, is incredible. I don't know what I'd do without it. So are you tracking it completely? And, and we talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, like, are they a veteran? Do they have kids? Do they have pets? What are their hobbies? If you've got all this thing, you're building that relationship. It's not just, hey, here's some properties to go check out. Let me burn and, and turn to the next person. You're building relationships with these people. And, and one of the things I've always heard, and I use this, is I want to be your real estate agent for life. I want to be a realtor for life, right? And, and that's part of the follow-up. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a new lead. It can be following up with your sphere of influence, following up with past clients, following up with potential clients. Uh, every person you talk to about real estate that's giving you some sort of solid feedback should be placed into your CRM. This is something that I've had uh, an issue with in the past, still trying to get better at it every day. But if you have a conversation with somebody, half the time I used to not put them into a CRM, I wouldn't save their contact information on my phone. They're just a phone number, text messages go through, boom, I just lost a lead, right? I do a, some sort of social media uh, post on a, on a listing, especially an affordable first time home buyer. You're going to get a ton of people reaching out if you do it the right way, market it the right way. Well, all of those are potential leads. So in the past, I used to just try to answer it. Maybe they weren't interested in that home. Maybe it didn't work out. Move on to the next person. So make sure that you are putting that into your CRM. That's huge. If you don't put it into your CRM, it's pointless even having that conversation. So you can boost your sphere of influence productivity with automated communication if you like. Still not as good as picking up the phone. Uh, and then number three is uh, going on qualified appointments. That's a huge thing. We want to try to qualify them before showing. It's at your discretion if you want to show someone who's not willing to get pre-qualified first. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, uh, you know I've got the first time is free. So I'll go show you homes without being pre-qualified if we have a really good conversation. And I'll also go show you homes for the first time without a buyer's rep if we have a really good conversation. Now, that is 100% up to you if you want to do that or not.
but going on qualified appointments is the key. So we're, we're reaching out to them, knowing what to say, following up with them, knowing what to say, and then going on qualified appointments because we knew what to say when we were prospecting them. Right. So number four is negotiating contracts. That's something we're not going to cover today. Uh, but obviously you need to know how to do that. Try to help your client out the best you can, because if they have a good experience with you, good closing experience, uh, you're going to be the real estate agent for life. So uh, let's see. I've also got your admin work should be done by an admin. You know, a lot of agents get caught up in trying to do everything, you know, and we wear a lot of different hats as much as it's fun to do. Sometimes you're, you're stepping over dollars to make pennies. So if you can, if it's admin work and things like that, try to delegate them. Okay. To someone else. Uh, and then I've gotten here, this is just uh, for us and our business model, but talk to agents about their business and make it a part of your business by doing that. So a couple other things here. Mindset's going to be huge. Mindset is everything in this industry. Uh, it's easy to get burnout and being burnt out is not fun. Uh, so if your mindset is right and you have a strong, positive mindset, you're going to ensure that you don't come off negative when you're talking to people or depressing. Uh, so just remember, you are the real estate professional. You're the pro, right? Most people don't know what the home pro home buying or selling process looks like. They don't know about finance. They don't know about contracts. They don't know about how to price homes. They don't know about any of this stuff. They watch HGTV and they think they're a pro maybe, you know, or maybe they've gone through a process once and now they're FISBO pro or whatever, but they're not. You are the real estate professional. You're trained for that, right? You've received specialized training to help your clients make the best real estate decisions. Uh, so how pro uh, one of the things that I want to talk about is prospecting calendar. You should be doing this in your daily routine. I used to not do it. My business changed when I did it. It's a huge part of why I feel like I've become successful is because I have everything laid out for me. I'm not that type of person that stays organized in my brain. If you are great for you, I would still put it down in a calendar. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, creating a calendar, right? So create a calendar, fill it with real estate tasks related to your preferred prospecting efforts. Uh, for example, if your prospecting activities can include phone calls. So if you're going to do phone calls for, you know, an hour, put that on your calendar. If you're going to do emails for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, put it on your calendar, blog posts, maintaining your Facebook, whatever you're doing, put it in your calendar. So, you know, one of the biggest things is if we're not seeing success with our prospecting, you're going to get burnt out. You got 200 phone calls you make a day. You don't get a hold of anybody. You're burnt out. You start feeling lost. What else can I do? This isn't working. How do I make it work, right? But if you have a set routine every day and you consistently stay doing it, you're going to be successful with it. So being consistent is step number two. Make sure that your prospecting effort is continuous. Go, good rule of thumb is to make sure you're setting aside time every day, at least a week to, pro uh, that shouldn't say every week. I think I took that out, to prospect. Uh, we need to be doing this every day. If you can prospect every day, don't get me wrong, take your days off. If you don't, <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get very uh, depressed. Take your days off but you need to prospect every day. Now, I'm gonna show you a bunch of different ways to prospect. So if you're like, hey, I made 200 phone calls yesterday, really don't feel like picking up the phone, I really don't feel motivated, there's gonna be a bunch of other ways you could prospect. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that. But when you prospect, don't get on social media and start looking at sports stuff. Don't, unless you've got a sports uh, club or you know some sort of activities that you can you know prospect with that as well, but don't get sidetracked in what the Kardashians are doing. Don't get sidetracked with all these other, you know, what musicians and things are doing. Stay focused on prospecting, okay, the best you can. Uh, stick to the plan, and that's that's everything, right? So stick to the plan. Prospecting is one of the most long-term but profitable tasks you can do. Consistent and constant approach to prospecting will eventually land results in your funnel. So this is a big deal. Talked about that a little bit. Triage approach, staying consistent, following up with them. You know, same thing goes with your prospecting, right? If you've got one avenue out of all these things that brings you the most leads or the most potentials, then you should double up on that, right? Uh, for me, it's it's calling people, right? Setting ads out and then they call and and I've and I've had great success with that. If you like door knocking, then you double down on door knocking. You know, instead of doing it once a week, do it twice a week. That's where you're getting your leads from. If you're doing open houses, do open houses, right? So now that you know how to build that schedule, um, I'm sorry, it says. Uh, I have here, as it becomes uh, part of your routine, you'll be able to complete tasks quicker. So instead of doing 200 phone calls in two hours, you're going to start doing them in, you know, maybe an hour, right? Uh, setting time aside, prospecting will begin to feel like second nature. It's just something you do every day and it's part of your business. Make it a part of your business and you'll be successful. So this is a big thing here. I heard this one time. And to me, this is means everything. 
if you can't figure out where your next three deals are coming from, you have a lead generation problem. And if you're sitting there to yourself going, where are my next three deals going to come from? You have a huge lead generation problem. Uh, most of the time, the agents don't like it because they don't have a predictable, duplicatable success at the result of doing it. So if you're not getting success, that's where agents get burnt out. I've been there. Everyone's been there. There's a couple of seasoned agents in here. I guarantee you at some point they've been burnt out too. We've all been burnt out. If you can continue to stay consistent and find where the results are coming from and track analytically where they're coming from, then you're going to have huge success. So make sure you're talking to uh, buyers or sellers who are actually motivated, right? We're not just going to pick up the phone and call some random person and say, hey, I'm a real estate agent. You know anybody that's looking to buy or sell? And we get them all the time. My wife just got a text message the other day, literally saying that exact same thing. And she sent me a screenshot and said, don't do this. Don't ever do this, right? That's what she said. Don't do this. I'm like, I don't. That's not what we do, right? That's it, that. That is a true cold call, right? We do things a little bit different. Get into that here in a little bit, but um, you know, make sure you're talking to people who are motivated. Talking with anyone who will listen will get you contacts, but it won't get you appointments, right? The whole idea is to set appointments. We talked about that. That's the number three: setting qualified appointments. Uh, so you also need to know what to say. We talked about that. You must be. You must ask for the business uh, to close, right? So we have to be asking for business. If we're not asking for business. Uh, we're going to stay low on transactions. We're not going to be very happy with our success. Ask for business. Uh, when you think, do I have I'm on the right page? Okay. Yep. So uh, when you think you're getting ghosted, uh, you know, it's because you've waited too long for the follow up, plain and simple. Leads do not get better with age. They don't. If someone reached out to me and said, hey, Jace, I'm interested in one, two, three, four Main Street. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And I just put them on the back burner and then I hit them up a week later and go, oh, crap, I should have reached out to them. Right. Then you reach out to them. They're like, man, I've already found a house. You're like, oh, great. There just goes, you know, $10,000 commission check. Right. If you think about it that way, or you can think about it, you know, that's a person I, I couldn't help out because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to. Right. So you have to assume that the veteran agents uh, are going to be terrible at answering and following up with leads. They just don't. Right. They've got the business. They've got the success. A lot of times it's referral business. So they may not have that speed to lead. They may go, hey, I'll delegate it to someone else or I'll reach out. Uh, so taking the call yourself and doing it uh, will be better than a drip, plain and simple. I mentioned that having the actual phone call is the best. People like talking on the phone. And if they don't, then you can resort to you know text messages or emails and things like that. But having a phone call, not only can you tell what kind of emotion the person is having, you know, you can mirror that when you're talking with them, but you just can get all the information out instead of text messages. So drips work better kind of back in the day. Uh, I'm not saying you still can't use them. We use them on uh, leads that don't respond within multiple times of us reaching out. We'll put them on a drip just to try to stay relevant to them, but they're more than likely a, a tire kicker. Um, if it works, uh, use it as a last result. If you want to be the absolute best in the market, follow up fast. That's all there is to it. Uh, also, uh, extra tip, don't fake bond with buyers or sellers. First interaction, I'm sure everyone's had that or someone's tried to contact you to sell you something and they've got this fake bond with you, it's it's terrible. Let it happen organically. Remember, they want answers and we need to provide value. No one wants to be fake bonded. So they've reached out for some reason uh, for us to, to give them information. So if we can provide value, there's a good chance we're going to continue that relationship. So if you have a seller, be direct. Just ask them about the home. The goal is to get inside their home and meet them and close the listing, right? The listing agreement. Uh, and then close the listing. And we'll get into that. If you have a buyer, you must be able to control the conversation, but let them speak. Uh, asking questions to get them talking and motivated is a huge thing. All right. So where do we get leads? Right. And here's just a couple that I've had success with in the past. I know there's uh, probably a thousand other different ways to do it, but here is some, if you're not familiar with where to get them from, uh, the number one is sphere of influence. I think those are the, the best leads that you could possibly get. Uh, these people, they, they know and trust you, right? Uh, because family and friends are the easiest people to do business with. You must let everyone know you're a real estate agent. Now, something that when I first got into the business, uh, an actual instructor told me this at a at one of the champion school of real estate. Um, and that's not a thing to throw it out for them, but I liked it. But anyways, uh, the instructor said, you know, there's those people that are on social media that are Advocare, nothing against Advocare. Um, but they let you know they're with Advocare, right? They're going, I'm with Advocare. I got Spark. I don't even know if Spark's with Advocare, but they've got all these different products they want to tell you about, right? Do the same thing with real estate. You want everyone to know you're a real estate agent. Now, don't do the coined uh, cliche term that everyone uses. Hey, I'm a real estate agent. You know anybody wanting to buy or sell? 
that's not what we want to do, right? We want to provide value. We want to be the pro in our market. Uh, but but sphere is huge. So one of the things that I also heard uh, is has been super great to my success is that if you pick two letters in the alphabet, right? Start with A and Z and you work your way in and maybe work your way out or however you want to do it. Just pick two letters of the alphabet. Uh, once a week, call those two letters and everybody in your phone. So depending on how popular you are, you may have a lot of people with A and B or C and D or A and Z, however you want to do it. But call two letters with their last name, call two letters and and just BS with them. You know, hey, John, how's it going? Just wanted to see, maybe even do a little Facebook stalking before. Hey, I just saw your kid graduated high school, man. Congratulations. I just saw your kid started football. Congratulations. That's awesome, man. So excited for you. How's everything been? Right. Just have that kind of small talk conversation to see how things are going. There's going to be a time where they're going to ask you 100 percent. Hey, man, how's everything been going with you? That's your turn to go. Hey, yeah, I've been doing real estate, man. I've been killing it. I've actually got a bunch of goals in mind. Or I've got you know some goals I've set this year to, to close, you know, however many contracts you want to put in there or whatever, close a lot of deals, you know, always trying to grow, man. If you know anybody, love to help them out. And that's really all you need to say about it. You don't have to go too far into it. But if you have that conversation with them and actually be genuine and see what's going on with them and caring about them, there's a good chance you're going to stay top of mind. Not to mention the way Facebook and Instagram and social media works with the algorithms. Uh, they're going to start seeing your post because they're going to like it. Oh, man, Jace just called me up last week to see how things were going. You know, that was awesome. I haven't had anybody do that in a while. Or maybe they're super popular and you're just on the list. But guess what? In their mind, they're going to see they're going to see your post. They're going to like and comment on it because they've been having conversation because you care about them. Right. And it's not it, it ultimate goal to get business. This is just part of our business. What we have to do, we have to talk to people. So sphere of influence, uh, while it's a good place to start, it's not a one time event. That's what I talked about. Uh, you have to remind your close network that you're available to help them find a new home uh, without being bothersome. We don't want to just call and say, hey, looking by ourselves. Don't want to do that. OK, provide value. Uh, mailing snail mail is what I'm talking about here. A lot of people still do it. A lot of people still have great success with it. I'm, pers I'm personally doing it myself. Uh, some examples are uh, personalized professional letters that are authentic to demonstrate value and have motivational call to action. The call to action is huge. If you don't have a great call to action, they're not going to give you a call, right? Call to action. Uh, handwritten notes to sellers or people in the um, area that you're trying to farm. That's also huge. Market report that is data driven. Data is huge. People want to see that. Uh, and it's specific to their neighborhood, right? Hey, homes in your neighborhood are selling at 102% over list price. Or the opposite, you know, if you, you probably wouldn't want to do that, but hey, they're selling at 97%, but we're sell, still selling them at 100%, right? You can show the market in that area. Uh, call to action of an equity report, right? Hey, you've been in the home for, and, and depending on how data-driven you want to get, you can say, hey, John, on a postcard or something. Hey, John, how's it going? See, you've got, you know, four years of equity into your home. Love to give you a free equity report. Give me a call, right? Something like that. Um Circle prospecting is pretty big. Uh, circle prospecting is reaching out to a, a surrounding homeowners who live nearest to your latest listing or recent closing. Doesn't even have to be your listing, right? Find a listing in your brokerage. Uh, you know, we've got plenty of listings for people who are here. You can reach out, surrounding, let them know about what's going on with the property. If it's sold, do a just listed, just sold. Uh, if there's an open house coming up, invite them to open houses, right? If there's a price decrease coming up, invite them or, and, or let them know. Uh, let them know there's real estate activity happening and that there's an opportunity for them to get in on the action. Uh, so this is a one, two little punch strategy for circle prospecting that I found works. Uh, the moment a listing goes live, we're going to send that out, right? We're going to do as many that we can. There's a bunch of different programs out there, Red X, My Plus Leads, you name it. There's a ton of them. You can just type in real estate circle prospecting in Google and you'll have more ads than you can shake a stick at. Um, so if the sale closes, we're doing that as well. Uh, get a postcard or letter in the mail alerting your community of the activity. Uh, follow up with a phone call. Uh, if you're feeling bold, you can door knock. Uh, but the day after uh, uh, the day after delivery of that postcard or that mail to start the conversation. Right. Hey, sent you a letter. Uh, just wanted to see if you got it. You know, the, there's some crazy activity that's been going on. The market's super hot. Uh, love to just give you a free equity reports, 100 percent free and just try to provide value. Right. IDX uh, website, this is huge. If you don't have one, you need one. Uh, but the IDX website's been huge. Thankfully, uh, Chime has got a really killer one that we use. You can learn how to use the landing pages and obtain buyers or sellers information and give them a call. I'm going to uh, add a little more to that here in a section or in a second when we talk about another, another uh, prospecting way. But 
IDX website's huge. If you can drive them the traffic there, you're going to get their information, whether it be good or bad, you're going to get their information and you can have that uh, conversation. So social media, it's it's huge. Uh, using relevant hashtags. If you're not using hashtags, you should be, but that's to build a relationship with people who uh, you think are soon to either be buyers or sellers, right? So if you've got a popular hashtag that's in the area for your area, you should be using that. Uh, that way, if they click it or they do any uh, searching on that, you're going to come up with your uh, real estate post. So you can organize your friend list, friends list. This is something that I did that I felt was great. You can organize your friends list. And I've got another video on all this stuff, but you can organize your friends list uh, to ensure you're engaging with the right people, right? If I've got some other real estate agent that's in, uh, I don't know, Massachusetts, not saying that I didn't won't want to have a conversation with them because I'd love to be the referral partner, but uh, you know they may be on a different engagement than I would with my sphere of influence or with my past clients or with my vendors or lenders or whatever you've got. So separate those. And each day when you do your prospecting, if you've got social media for 15, 20 minutes around lunch, sitting around farting around while you're having your lunch, go to the people that you've got, past clients. I have them literally labeled as past clients. I get on there and I just go through, like, comment on every single thing. Now, there's a whole ordeal that I've got. And if you want it, I can shoot you an email. But there's a social media that you should do every day. Post, like, share. It's a, it's a great kind of organizer to help you out. Stay focused on that. Um, I do have that. I don't have it included in here. But uh, making sure that you're engaging with the right people. Uh, blog post, you know, what's going on in the area. Be a data uh, data nerd for your area. And that's what I've got on there. So social media. Um, and I'm trying to see here if I've got, yep, got some other stuff. So the IDX website is going to be huge. Again, you can incorporate that into social media. Um, expires. A lot of people get nervous about expires and FISBOs, but you know, expired listings are a golden opportunity for real estate agents. Uh, these owners have basically raised their hand and said, I want to sell my home. Now, if it worked out or not is a different story, but you can make sure you have their information pulled up of their previous listing. You know, that way you've got the information, you've reviewed it real quick. And if you're going through a list of them, pull it up once they answer the answer the phone or whatever, you know, but I would have that information, you know, prior to that. Uh, so you can ask them questions and get more info on why it didn't work out. And it's as simple as that. You know, there's a ton of different uh, FISBO scripts. I don't have any in here today, but you can talk with them and say, hey, you know, John, how, what happened? Why do you think it didn't work out? And they're going to talk to you and tell you what happened. You know, um, make sure that you're providing value and try to set the appointment. Out of every single conversation you have, you're trying to set an appointment who's someone who is uh, ready to go, right? These people are ready to go. They're ready to sell their home. It didn't work out. Maybe they had it overpriced. Maybe they had pink walls throughout the entire house. Who knows? But it didn't work out. So now you've got the opportunity to get in there and have the, have the conversation. When I say set the appointment, <clears throat> I don't mean, you know, a phone call. Uh, if you have to do a Zoom, I know that we were doing those during pandemic and I did a lot of listing uh, presentations that way. I still try to get the face to face. I don't care if we're waiting, wearing 18 masks and we're 15 feet foot apart. Like, let's have a face to face. I want to see your house. Right. That's a big way to get in. Hey, I'd love to see the house, see how it compares. And I'd love to meet you. Right. So that's something that you can do. FISBO is just like uh, it expireds. It's a fantastic uh, way to prospect because there are sellers who have already shown they want to sell their home. Again, they're throwing their information out there. Hey, come buy my house. They're they're putting it out there. Now, um, converting FISBOs, uh, and you'll be looking at more deals uh, to, to grow your business, but FISBOs are a, a little bit different than expireds just because of the way of you, that you approach them, right? Expireds, typically they listed it. They trusted someone. It didn't work out. Uh, it could have been their own fault. Maybe they wanted a price too high. You know, their babies uh, were born in that house. It was their first house. They got married in that house. It's got a lot of sentimental value, whatever the case is. Uh, but FISBO, you know, they think that they know uh, how to do it. Now, uh, the strategy will be a little different. And uh, it's got in here, and you guys can screenshot these. This is going to be recorded. Uh, but they feel like they don't need a real estate agent to sell their home. Uh, either that or they don't want to pay a commission, which is typically what happens most of the time. You think these fo uh, folks would be uh, impossible to convert, but you'd usually be wrong. Uh, usually it takes, all it takes to win these listings is showing a listing presentation, providing value, persistent follow-up, and getting that face-to-face. -face. <clears throat> you can include here, statistics reveal that FISBO homes tend to sell for five and a half to 20% less than homes that sold by a realtor, right? So you can make that a pitch, uh, part of your pitch. The other one I saw, and, and maybe Jonathan, you could chime in on this. I think it was 86% of deals uh, every year are done by, are included with a real estate agent. Is that right? 
I think that's the most current report that's came out. Yeah. So if you know we're we're shooting for eighty six percent, that's wild. Like there's multiple s- statistics you can show to uh, a, a homeowner that's trying to for sale by owner, but knowing your stuff, showing that you're the pro, give them data and provide them with a uh, listing process, you know, would get you a pretty good foot in the door. So the next one here, and uh, if you've got any questions about any of that stuff, feel free to reach out to me uh, separately, you know, after this or whatever, but uh, video marketing, this has become the, the craze. It's it's great. Uh, and, and I've even gotten here that 73% of homeowners say that they would uh, likely uh, to list with a real estate agent who uses video. And that's kind of becoming uh, the, the more popular thing. It's great. People watch that. They've even said that uh, typical posts on Facebook have more engage or have less engagement than posts with videos. So people, you know, just like we're doing right now with, and I joke with my wife about this because of TV. I used to remember we had the cable box and it had all the channels and that was pretty much it. Yeah, you could add HBO or, you know, um, Showtime or any of those or pay-per-view, but now we've gotten away from that, right? So we've gotten away where we've got, Hulu, we've got Disney Plus, we've got Paramount Plus, we've got the ESPN, I've got the MLB, I've got the NFL, we've got all these different subscriptions. I Every time I look at my subscriptions, I'm like, golly, it's crazy, because now I feel like we're paying way more than we were when we had that cable box. But what I'm getting at is that people want to see what they want to see. So the way that Facebook does it with the algorithms, if you're constantly involved showing them what they want to see, they're going to keep watching it. And it shows that video has proven to be better than you know your traditional posts. So, you know, video has is, is become huge. If you can master video, you're ahead of the game. Uh, social media advertising provides some very specific targeting tools uh, that you can expand your reach. And this is talking about target uh, marketing. And, and I've got a little bit of that as well, but you can use video to do that. But YouTube, TikTok, Instagram Reels, LinkedIn, uh, that's just a couple of them that you can use video to, to get your value across. Um, and especially for a specific geographic farm area or an area. Testimony, testimonial videos with previous clients is huge. Uh, listing uh, marketing, you know, just listed, just sold. Market updates, value proposition, how tos, behind the scenes. If you want to, I mean, the the list goes on. So you know, video marketing is great. You should be doing that. Um, Facebook groups. This is something I've had a lot of success with. One of the things that I always tell agents is wherever you're at, just go to Google Maps, pull up your area, and look at all the surrounding towns. Right, small towns if you can. Uh, what you should do is, and if you're in a larger area, a uh, larger city like I am and, and some of the other agents on here, then what you need to do is you need to find the neighborhoods that are around you. Drive around, look at the neighborhoods, try to join, right? Find their Facebook group. So I grew up in a place called Kingwood. Kingwood's got Kingwood yard sales, Kingwood for sale, Kingwood garage sale, Kingwood, whatever you want, right? You can add your city and put all those in there. If you can join all of those, I'm probably over 300 for sale pages. So when I've got a listing, guess what? I'm putting that listing all throughout all those Facebook groups, right? If if you've got market report. So for instance, Houston Association of Realtors makes it super easy for us. Your MLS probably does it too. Get what's going on. If you want, you can go to the just sold. You can type in, uh, You can if you're doing your CMA properly, you can have the list percent to sale percentage. You can find the average days on market. You can go back a year ago and see what they were selling for, right? Do the math, see the percentage, see how many have sold compared to last year. And do that for each specific neighborhood or area. And I guarantee you, people are going to know that you're the pro, right? So that's been huge for me is, uh, is, is the social media groups. Not to mention, uh, when they tag someone, usually a relative, friend, somebody like that looking for a house, they'll tag them. I immediately reach out to them, right? Hey, thanks for thanks for tagging your friend in this. You know, love to help out in any way that I can, if you need anything. And then I, ta- and then I send a message to the other person too, right? Typically, we're not friends. They have to accept the, the friend uh you know, the message request, but I sent them a message, let them know, hey, if you need, if you would like to see this home or if you need any information about it, let me know, right? So those are kind of some leads just right there that I'm getting my name out there and, and talking to them with, you know, talking to them about real estate. So Facebook groups have been huge for me. Um, if you educate and engage uh, people that you don't know like this, you're going to eventually build relationships and they're going to trust you. And I've had numerous phone calls of people that say, man, I just see your posts all the time. I want to work with you. Same thing with video, right? I know a lot of agents have had crazy success with YouTube and and people start following them because they like their videos, stumbled across their video and they, they continue to follow them and watch all their stuff. So events are, are huge. I'm doing one that's coming up uh, in my area. It's a local event. I'm going to go put a fold out table there and uh, you know, I'm going to provide buyer's guides and CMA is on the spot. 
So if someone's got an address and they want to shoot it to me, I can give them an equity report. Now I'm not going to print it out. I'm not going to bring my giant commercial printer over there um, as I looked at it because it gives me trouble sometimes. But uh, you know, I'm going to send it to their email, right? They're going to give me their contact information and I'm going to send it to their email. So I'll probably do a form through my uh, IDX website and it's going to put all their information in. I'm going to have them locked and loaded into the CRM and I'm going to shoot them a CMA and I'll do that on the spot. I'll tell them, hey, look, I'll give it to you in 30 minutes, depending on how busy I am. And, you know, talk to the next person. So um, let's see here. Uh, paid for targeted ads. Talked a little bit about this. <clears throat> this is using any of these things, video, uh, posts about, uh, you know, trying to target a specific area, target a specific area, a specific audience on. And I've got another video on that on, you know, putting a little money into it. And each day it's going to send your post out. It's going to get you know, 20,000 people in front of your post or your post in front of them. So targeted ads are great. Uh, you do get a lot of looky-loos that just want to see stuff. Uh, Facebook ads work for a lot of agents. They've worked for me in the past. They do have a lower uh, con uh, conversion percentage, but it's a great way to get some leads and, and get to talking to some people. Pop buys, this is something that a lot of agents have had killer success with. <clears throat> They'll go drop stuff off at doorsteps, ring the doorbell, maybe shoot them a text kind of do like a ding dong ditch like we used to do back in the day. I think now that's probably illegal, but yeah, drop something off on their doorstep, shoot them a text. Hey, just thinking of you whenever you get a chance, you know, go out front. They'll probably see it because everybody's got ring doorbells or something equivalent to it, but drop them something off. Right. And if you want, you can top it, type in on Google real estate pop by uh, ideas. There's thousands of them. Right. So uh, that's something that's huge. I would do that for your top clients, top cheerleaders, things like that. Or, uh, you know, maybe a listing that you've got in the works that, I don't know, something just to stay relevant. But uh, open houses, if you're not doing open houses, you should be. Uh, I've been in the industry for a little while. I still do open houses. Uh, open houses are a great way to get free leads. Now, the the idea is is to market the absolute heck out of it. Now, if you don't know what a mega open house is, Google it. Real estate mega open house. Uh, or I can provide you some information on that as well. But marketing the open house is huge. Don't just throw an open house sign in a yard and expect people to show up. It's not going to happen. You got to market it. Use the social media and some of these other ways of prospecting to do that. Um, and that's that's going to be huge. So that's those are free leads, by the way, right? It's all free. Uh, so sponsorships, you can do that. Got a little picture of baseball. I'm a huge baseball fan. Uh, little league, local businesses, events, et cetera, whatever you want to do. Maybe host a crawfish boil or something. You know, we, we like our crawfish down here. So do something like that. <clears throat> Local employers, that's going to be a huge, whether they be small business or a larger business. Uh, you can see if they've got a relocation company that uh, you can either join or they work with. And then you can reach out to the uh, HR departments and, and request a meeting. Uh, now, you're either way, you're building a business or building a relationship uh, connection with a local business, uh, no matter what the size, which is going to be huge. So if you can kind of you know stay on top of mind for them, then there's a good chance that they may refer somebody who's relocating. Or if somebody's you know looking that that works there, maybe they've got a connection. So <clears throat> door knocking, uh, this is huge. If you if you're interested in it, uh, door knocking is great. Uh, so the open house, I would say, is one of the biggest ways of doing door knocking. You can let people know what's going on. Hey, we've got an open house on uh, Saturday. You know, it's uh, from you know twelve to twelve to four. We're going to give an an hour before from eleven to twelve for all the neighbors to come in and check it out so if you've got anybody that's looking you know whether it be family member friend colleague here's a flyer you can shoot it over to them hope to see you there right something to, to get them to get them going now if you want you can door knock and introduce yourself if it's your neighborhood or whatever hey i'm one of the neighbors i'm a real estate agent i don't personally do that i would much rather use the the facebook groups and stuff like that to do that um where i live it's a little more rural they may uh they may pull out their uh, their friend Smith and Wesson, you know, if, if you go door knock out here. But, uh, you know, that's something you can check out. So um, get involved. Being involved in the community is going to be huge. And, and I don't just mean this on, on a standpoint of charities and things like that. It's great if you do that. But I'm talking about staying informed, right? So there's probably a chamber of commerce. There may be a city council meeting, something like that. Try to incorporate that into your business. Uh, I knew about a lot of the development that's been going out around me before a lot of people did because I started going to Chamber of Commerce meetings. So that's a good way to know what's going on in the area. Uh, you can pay for leads, whether it be an actual lead source that provides buyer and seller leads. Uh, Zillow is one of them, realtor.com, Zbuyer, Agentology. There's a 
thousand different companies out there that will do that for you. Uh, those are ways you can do that. Uh, build relationships with new home sales. That's going to be a big one. I actually skipped uh, one, but but building relationships with them. I've gotten quite a few deals from new home uh, builders, sales reps that have said, "Hey, look, I've you know I've got a client here that needs to buy a house or wants to buy a house, but they need to sell their home in order to purchase. Can you help them out?" Well, of course I can, right? And if you want to even make a deal as far as negotiating, hey, we've got a new home package where you know we list your home for one and a half percent, and we get on the new contract for the three percent right? However you want to do it, but being able to help them sell their property in order to purchase a property is huge. Uh, so so having that relationship with new home sales is, is great. Um, and then uh, asking for referrals for family and friends. I can't stress this enough. You have to ask for business. If you're not asking for business, you're not going to get it. Worst case scenario, they say, okay, cool. Yeah, not a problem. They're not going to tell you, no, I'm not going to refer you out, right? I mean, you got to ask for business. You never know. Oh man, I totally forgot you're a real estate agent. Yeah, my my cousin's actually moving down here, you know, or maybe maybe I'm, we're moving my mom down here because we want her to be closer, right? What whatever the case is, you got to ask for that business. <clears throat> All right, so now that you have an idea of where to get started finding leads, how do we effectively communicate with them? That's going to be a huge thing. So I've got this buyer script here. This is uh, something that I've had success with. There's a lot of curveballs that can be thrown that are some rebuttals that are not included in here, but there is a couple of key points that we wanna cover. So location is going to be uh, very big. We wanna find out where their location is obviously. So I talked about this a little earlier. So if I've got, uh, and I use John, cause John's, um, I just use that as a you know John, Do John Doe, but I would call them. We don't need to verify. Uh, we don't need to verify their, um, who they are, right? We're just gonna go ahead and lead in that we've got the right person. So. Uh, and, and sorry, let me reel it back a little bit. So before you make your calls, you got to be able to pick up the phone and make those calls to be successful. You have to make calls. That's part of it. If you're elected to make calls, remind yourself of your financial and personal goals, right? Hey, I need to make six figures this year. I have never made that before in my life. That would be a big change for my family. Hey, if I don't get a closing within the next three months, I'm going to be broke, right? I mean, remind yourself of those financial goals. So um, you can use this script in, in any situation. Um, you know, it, it starts the conversation. So remember, I use this when they reach out, right? They reach out about an ad, they reach out about a post, they reach out about something. I just don't pick up the phone and call my neighbor 20 houses down and start talking about real estate. I just don't do that. Um, so, but, but what I was saying is don't verify someone's identity. You have their personal number. Uh, so saying something like, Hey, can I speak to John? Uh, when you verify, you sound like a salesperson. You just do. When people call me and they go, Hey, is this Jace? Immediately, I'm standoffish. Yeah, how can I help you? Right? What What's going on? So just, you don't need to verify, okay? Um, when they answer, just immediately say, hey, John, this is Jace with the Bowling Group, right? Do something like that. Uh, so use the source they reached out about. So if it's a Facebook ad, if it's a Zillow lead, if it's whatever it is, if you're paying for leads, find out where they're getting their leads from because you need to use that source, right? Hey, you reached out through one of our Facebook ads about, one, two, three, four, Main Street. What all questions do you have, right? So if they're not interested, uh, don't just say thanks for your time. Don't let your ego get involved uh, and say, you know, wait a minute, just give me five minutes. Don't fight with them. Uh, you're the professional. Just, you know, uh, you know, you can always ask them, hey, just out of curiosity, are you looking for a home? Maybe it wasn't that particular property they were interested in and they accidentally signed up for it. Don't just cast it out and, and, and hang up on them, okay? So anyways, this script I've internalized. Uh, this is something that you should internalize. You can change it up. You can make it your own. You can say something different. This is just something that I've used to find out the key factors of what they're looking for and if I can help them. So location is going to be huge. So pretty simple. Just, hey, whatever their name is, uh, tell them your name, who you're with. Um, you don't even have to ask how they're doing today. I think I've got that in here. Don't even have to ask that, right? Just straight to the point. You inquired about a property at 1234 Main Street, did you happen to have any questions about this particular property? Or you could even add, or did you want to see it, right? Because we're trying to get them face to face. We want to get them into a home. So uh, immediately I say, hey, it's located in this subdivision or this area. Is that the area you're looking to buy in, right? Are there any other areas you're looking to buy in? If they're in a one specific subdivision in one area and it's rural and there's no subdivisions around it, and that's a hot subdivision, it's going to be very hard to find them a home. So make sure that you're expanding their search a little bit because, yeah, they may want 
square footage. They may want two car, three car garage. They may want a pool. They may want all that, but in the area they're looking at, it may not work. So maybe right next door, you might find them the home of their dreams, but it's just in the next door neighborhood, right? So try to expand that. So I've got some stuff here. Yes, uh, you can ask them what they like about that area. We're trying to find out more information. Man, we grew up there. We've got a bunch of family there. It's a great place. Or, hey, I'm relocating to the area. I really like that area. You know, whatever it is, but you're asking them what's going on. If they say no, they're not interested in that area, then obviously ask more questions, right? What other areas have you been, you've been looking in? What is it that attracts you to this, this area or that area, right? We're trying to figure out if there's other locations they're interested in. So location is, is pretty self-explanatory, I feel like. Um, next one's going to be price. So price is going to be huge because people a lot of times will look at look at a price point on a house for sale sign and that do, they don't know what that means monthly, right? So we're going to talk about price. We're just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Hey, the home you inquired about is listed at 400000 Is that the amount you're looking to buy in? And if they say yes, then ask them, well, great. That's awesome. How, how'd you come up with that? Right. And they're going to tell you, oh, you know, I, I used a mortgage calculator. Oh, no, we've got a house that we think we could sell for the same price. You know, they're going to tell you about that. We're, we're trying to let them talk. Right. And if they say no, then you say, what price range would you feel comfortable in? Uh, how did you end up at that price range that they feel comfortable in? Right. So the next question I would ask is, do you currently rent or own your home? They're going to tell you if they own you can straight up ask them, well, you need to sell it before you uh, before you purchase the next one. And if so, you can tell them that you can assist them with that, right? Uh, if they don't need to sell them, then, uh, you know, you could ask them some more questions once you get to the finance. Uh, just take it in, kind of let it go. But um, if they're in a lease, ask them when the lease is up <clears throat> and then what their time frame looks like to move into the new home, right? So again, we can hold them accountable later if they try to ghost you. Uh, I know we talked about this a little bit before the, the video, but, you know, if someone says, hey, I need to move in 90 days, then you can kind of hold their feet to the fire, right? Hey, we it's been a month and a half. It's going to take us a month and a half to get a home under contract. You said you want to move in 90 days, you know, something something along those lines. So uh, agent, this is a huge part. We want to make sure we're not going to get burned. Uh, the, this line that I have uh, underlined right here, the sentence is is I use it every time. I assume you reached out to me directly because you're not working with an agent currently. Is that correct? Right. We want to make sure they're not working with an agent. If they say yes. And you say, perfect. I look forward to earning your business. I'm going to show you that I'm the real estate agent that you wanted. Right. If they say no, ask more questions. Are you calling signs? Um, you know, are you, uh, do you have an exclusive agreement with an agent? Or you could say, do you have a relationship with an agent? Uh, you know, if I were to send you some properties and you wanted to see some of them, would I have a chance to earn your business? Right. So here's some things right here. If they're using a listing agent or an open house, you can uh, and, and again, you can screenshot this, but you can let them know the relationship that they've signed with that seller. Right. It means that they're going to try to get the most money for the seller. So we're trying to make sure that we're going to get that relationship. A lot of times people don't understand the difference between a buyer's agent and a listing agent. So if we explain those uh, fiduciary uh, duties, then there's a good chance we may be able to earn their business. Um, if it's another agent or agreement, this is totally up to you on how you want to do it. I usually ask them who the agent is, right? And if they're like, uh, uh, I don't know, it's some agent that it's a friend of my wife's sister's cousin's, you know, coworker. Well, then I know I may have a chance to earn their business, right? Um, but you know, I would definitely not try to be negative or anything like that about that other agent because that's not what we do. Um, but if it's another agent. You can ask if they, you know, here's some questions you can ask if they're full-time realtor, do they do business in the area? Who knows? Texas is a big state, right? In, in our state. So they could live on the complete other side of the world, you know. But, um, you know, we basically are just trying to see if we have the opportunity without being too pushy. Don't be pushy. Um, and then multiple agents, a lot of times people will say, well, I've got multiple agents looking for a property. So you can explain that buyers, uh, the importance of buyers communicating with one agent. Uh, and here are the reasons why, right? Out of all the 40,000, in my case, Houston agents have access to see the same properties. We're all seeing the same stuff, right? Unless you're a pro about pulling some off-market stuff, which if you've got that through uh, investor groups and things like that, then explain that, right? Hey, I can pull some other properties uh, that are maybe not on market that may fit your needs. Uh, but you basically want to explain your pros of real estate agent, right? Hey, I've been doing business this long. We've had great success. This is what we usually save our clients, et cetera, um, and try to you know, your success with negotiating repairs, contracts, whatever, and try to set the appointment, right? Because getting in front of them, maybe you're providing them a buyer's guide if you've got one, 
uh, something something to that extent. But working with multiple agents, usually there's too much communication going on and it doesn't usually work. Finance, this is kind of a touchy subject with some people. There's a lot of information on this. Again, if you want to screenshot this, but I just always ask, you know, just curious, uh, you know, when you buy your new home, will you be paying with cash or will you need a mortgage? Most of the time they're going to say mortgage, but if they have cash, uh, you know, it makes the buying process a lot easier. You don't have to explain this. They probably know, but when buying with cash, it gives us great negotiating power, tends to close a lot quicker. Sellers will need to have some sort of proof, uh, such as a bank statement when sending an offer. So you can ask that. And I always position it like, hey, look, while we're looking for homes, I'm going to need that bank statement. So if you can go ahead and send that over, you can black out information. All it needs to say is your name and it's got the number on there. You can black out the rest of the information, but I'm going to need that for our file. So when we go to make an offer, we don't have to wait on the bank to get us that, right? Because some banks are still a little more traditional on doing that. So when you ask here, have uh, have you been pre-approved yet? Right, that's going to be a big one. So talking about numbers, I try to keep these in order. Don't try to go out of order. If someone starts telling you and you start talking about location, they immediately start going, yeah, well, you know, I think I could get pre-approved for $500,000. Let them talk, you know, and then circle back to it. But I try to always keep these in order. Um, it's easier, especially when you internalize it and you remember it. I've used it at kids' birthday parties. I've used it at golf course. I've used it wherever. But ask them if they've been pre-approved yet. Uh, if they have, you can say something like this. Uh, you know, who are you approved with? Um, approved Wells Fargo. Okay, great. You know, great bank. They do a lot of deals. Have you ever thought about a second opinion? Uh, wouldn't hurt to shop around, right? And if they're like, yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm cool. I've got all my accounts with it. What I would say is something along the lines of we've got some preferred lenders that typically beat most interest rates and may be able to save you 75 to to $100. Is that something, you know, wouldn't you want to talk to them? And if they say no, then Maybe they have someone that they know that works at the bank, or maybe they just trust their bank. That's okay. Don't be too pushy about it. Uh, try to get their contact information. I always say, hey, look, you know, if you've got a contact with, uh, you know, Wells Fargo or Chase Bank, I need their phone number. Hopefully you've got their personal number uh, because a lot of times banks are closed on the weekends. Uh, our lenders will answer the phone anytime. You know, you can do something like that. Problem is a lot of people want to go look at homes on Saturday or Sundays, right? Well, most banks are closed during then. So getting a pre-approval letter is almost impossible. The process won't even start until Monday unless you've got a good relationship. So if they haven't, there's a couple of things that I say. Uh, I actually believe this is something that is a little bit different than what I say, but this one is the first step, regardless how you say it, first step uh, in the home buying process is getting pre-approved. Uh, one, it's going to give us a pre-approval letter, which during COVID, a lot of sellers wouldn't even let you into the home unless you had a pre-approval letter. But the pre-approval letter allows us to make an offer, right? We're going to need that whenever we go make an offer. It's going to show the proof of funds. Uh, so it's going to give us a head start on this whole process. Um, two, it, you know, and I'm trying to see on this one, I think it's different. Uh, second, it gives you a better sense of your budget. A lender will include things like principal interest taxes and insurance to get you exactly where you want to be monthly. Does that make sense? Uh, have a rock star lender that can explain the loan process more in detail. Can I have them call you after we get off the phone and explain the loan process better? And that's when you start setting that meeting up between the lender and your potential buyer. So that's what I do, but I want to explain the importance of the pre-approval letter. We want to get them approved. Last thing you want to do is go show them properties when they got a 400 credit score and they make no money, right? That's going to be a terrible deal. So criteria, uh, criteria is pretty self-explanatory. And what I always say is something similar to this. I'm going to go ahead and send you some more information about the home you inquired about. And this is where I would answer the question, right? Uh, you know, hey, Jace, what's that tax rate? Well, let me go ahead and pull that information up while I'm pulling it up. Uh, I would ask him the questions, right? Hey, Jace, I want to see that property tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay, well, let me go ahead and pull my calendar up. While I'm pulling the calendar up, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start asking these questions because I don't want to give them the answer. And I should include that at the beginning. I don't want to give them the answer because if it's not what they like, they're going to hang up on me. So here's where I would answer that. You know, hey, John, uh, tax rate, I've got it pulled up here. The tax rate you inquired about is, you know, 3.2% uh, interest. Is that the interest rate you're looking for? Oh man, it's pretty high. I want I want more for more bang for my buck. I want a 2.5, not a problem noted, right? But you include, I'm going to send you some other properties that match the criteria that we've talked about. Uh, I know, or not talked about that we're about to mention, sorry as well as some other properties that match your criteria. I know this house has four bedrooms, three bathrooms. You know, it's on an acre. Is there anything else you're looking for in a new home? Pretty self-explanatory. And then I finish it off with this every time. Based off this conversation, love to meet you as soon as possible. Uh, go over the home and the, or the home buying process and get you inside the home at 1234 Main Street or whatever properties. 
I'll also be sending four or five other homes to your email. Uh, so you can sort through them and let me know which ones you'd like to see along with that property. And you can compare them to get a better idea, right? So the ideas we're trying to get into, at least in my opinion, three homes. I don't want to go show one home. Same reason I don't want to answer the question right off the bat. If I go show them one property and that property doesn't work out, or in the past I've had it where you show a property and that property is actually under contract, the agent just didn't switch it over because they're waiting for earnest money and option money, you've just wasted time and pissed them off. So I don't do that. I try to get multiple properties. And if they're adamant about only seeing one property, then you can ask that question, right? Hey, if I found you a property that was almost identical, but it was cheaper, you wouldn't want to see it. Ask more questions when they give you pushback. Um, so summarize everything. Here's the location. Here's the price. You're not working with an agent. Uh, you're, you're okay. You know, you're looking to talk with somebody about getting a mortgage. Here's the criteria. You're looking for this, this, and this in a home. Um, how does that sound? What day are you free? Super excited to meet you, get you in this these houses. Uh, look forward to, to seeing you then, right? You want to get what day it is. And then in, in the between time from you talking to them and when they're uh, going to go schedule to see homes, you want to make sure that you're getting them with a lender at all possible. So that's pretty much the script that I do. There's going to be some curveballs. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, uh, reach out to me. I've got a ton of rebuttals for some curveballs and stuff, but internalize it, make it your own. You don't want to sound scripty. You don't want to sound anything like that. Seller script, I do things uh, a little bit different. There's a couple of questions I try to ask every single time, but there's no real like uh, set script. You're having a conversation. So, hey, John, this is Jace with Real Broker. You reached out about selling your home. Maybe they did an equity report through an ad, or maybe it's a referral from one of your sphere. Uh, you know, can you give me some more information about the reason you're looking to move? That's the first question I ask, right? Because we want to know uh, motivation. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the home you're wanting to sell, such as if there are any upgrades? Uh, are there any items that you're aware that need repairs, right? If they've got dry holes in the drywall and stuff, that's something you want to know. Uh, so you want time frame. How soon do you want to get the home sold? Do you still have a mortgage on the home? What price did you have in mind you would uh, like to see or like to get? This is a question I feel like is very important. This is a huge question you want to ask on sellers. Because if you don't get that information, a lot of times it may just say, hey, I'm calling you to get that, right? And they trust your trust your judgment. But if they have something in mind for a $400,000 home or a $600,000 home, and the home's really only worth two fifty, dollars and you go throw that in there, it's going to be a huge surprise to them when you do your listing presentation or when you meet with them in person, right? Because they're not expecting that. They're going to be upset. They're not going to want to do business with you. So try to get the information from them, right? Uh, and then where do you plan on going? Uh, where do you plan on going once you have the home sold? This is key. Just like if we needed to sell a home, you can tell them you can assist with that, but make sure you're doing each one first, right? So if we're calling a seller about a house, we want to talk about selling the home first and how we're going to plan for that before getting into the buy side. If we're talking to a buyer that wants to buy a home and then they need to sell, we need to concentrate on the buy side first and then set the appointment for the, for the sell side. Okay. Do one thing at a time, but let them know that you can help them out with both. So if they have an agent that, or, um, I'm sorry, if they want to move to a place that you don't work, you can let them know that you have an agent in that area and you can help out or a couple of agents in that area and can help out. So this is something I follow up with. Well, I will, you know, I'll need to see the home in person to see how it compares uh, to, to other properties and definitely look forward to meeting you. When can we set up a time uh, to show you? And I say the same thing every single time, proven repeatable listing process on how we get homes sold quickly for the most of money set the appointment. Every single thing you want to do, the idea is to set the appointment. So that's pretty much all I've got here. Uh, do you guys have any questions or anything on that? Nope. I think everybody's muted, stuff like that. Let me go ahead and stop the, uh, stop the record.